I made the mistake of visiting an old friend and his wife at their house for dinner. It had been a while since we had seen each other, and I was looking forward to catching up. Little did I know that this visit would take an unexpected turn. As the evening went on, we had a great time reminiscing about old memories and sharing laughter over a delicious meal. But as the night grew late, it was time for me to head home. I said my goodbyes and made my way to the front door, ready to leave. However, when I turned the key in the ignition of my car, nothing happened. It wouldn't start. Panic started to set in as I realized that it was already 11 p.m., and it was too late to find a mechanic to fix the problem. I explained the situation to my friend, who insisted that I stay the night at their house. Reluctantly, I agreed, grateful for their hospitality. But there was a small problem. Their house was minimalistic, to say the least. They didn't have a spare bed, and not even a sofa for me to sleep on. I hesitated, unsure of what to do. Sensing my dilemma, my friend's wife suggested that I sleep with them on their bed. It wasn't an ideal solution, but it seemed like the only option. As we settled into bed, my friend quickly dozed off, seemingly oblivious to the awkwardness of the situation. Just as I was starting to relax, his wife tapped me on the shoulder and motioned for me to come closer. I whispered, no, I can't do that. Your husband is my best friend. I felt a sense of loyalty and didn't want to betray his trust. She persisted, insisting that her husband wouldn't wake up no matter what we did. Skeptical, I replied, I don't believe you. If we start doing anything on this bed, he's bound to wake up. She reassured me, no, he won't. If you don't believe me, pluck a hair out of his butt. I promise you he won't wake up. Curiosity got the better of me, and I couldn't resist the strange challenge she presented. I carefully reached over and plucked a hair from my friend's behind. To my surprise, he remained sound asleep. It was bizarre, to say the least. Encouraged by this strange experiment, I cautiously climbed over to the other side of the bed, giving in to the temptation. I wasn't proud of what happened next, but the moment passed, and I returned to my original spot, hoping to fall asleep and forget about the whole ordeal. But it wasn't long before his wife tapped me on the shoulder once again, her persistence unwavering. I sighed, realizing that this peculiar routine was going to repeat itself throughout the night. Before I switched sides, she would assure me that he wouldn't wake up, and I would test it by plucking another hair. This bizarre cycle continued about eight more times, each time with me yanking a hair from my friend's posterior, before indulging in the forbidden act. It was a strange mix of disbelief and curiosity that kept me going, even though I knew deep down that it was wrong. However, on the ninth hair plucking attempt, my friend suddenly stirred. He turned to me, his eyes still heavy with sleep, and said, Are you I don't mind you messing around with my wife, but stop using my ass as a scoreboard. I was speechless, my face flushed with embarrassment and regret. It was a moment of realization that what we had done was crossing the line, and I had let curiosity get the better of me. I stammered an apology, feeling the weight of the mistake I had made. From that moment on, the atmosphere in the room was heavy with awkwardness and tension. The rest of the night was spent in an uncomfortable silence, and when morning finally came, I couldn't wait to leave. I said my goodbyes, feeling a mixture of shame and regret as I walked out their front door. That night would forever remain etched in my memory as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the consequences that come with yielding to temptation and betraying the trust of those we hold dear. It was a lesson learned the hard way, and one that I would carry with me for the rest of my life.